How's it going everybody? Brada Kimo here from Reload Hawaii. Thank you for watching another video. If it's your first time checking out my channel, please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down at the bottom. And don't forget to click that little bell on the side so you can get notifications to when I post a new video. Today we're going to be talking about cognitive biases and how they can have an effect on your ability to make good decisions. days ago I was sitting around and talked with some friends about what occurred at Texas and we had some people that were kind of anti-gun on this side and we had some people that were really pro-gun on this side and they were having a conversation both sides had excellent points but I noticed as I listened to both sides that people here and people here were relying on these things called cognitive biases and they really didn't even know it now cognitive biases are taught in high-level business classes and psychology and the reason why is very important is if you don't realize what this is you could be gathering information and interpreting it the wrong way and it could lead you to make very bad decisions and in businesses it can be catastrophic and in your personal life it could be even worse so the question is what is cognitive biases and how do you defeat it what is a cognitive bias i think the easiest way to get the point across is to ask the question that the professor that taught me about this asked the class so he posed a question how is it possible for one person to in their mind think they're 100 percent correct on something when the evidence and facts that they're giving are pointing that way, but they decide to go this way. And it's most likely because they're hanging on to some kind of personal belief and they're being affected by some type of cognitive bias. There is literally hundreds and hundreds of cognitive biases that have been identified. And it's not important that you know all of them. It's not even important that you know one of them. The only thing that's important to know is that you are being influenced by cognitive biases so that when you feel yourself starting to kind of rely on one, you know that you are and you can get out of that habit. Uh, it's also important to know that cognitive biases is a combination of how you're raised, where you're raised, education, who your friends were, your mom and dad, all of the stuff that's going on in your life, your religious beliefs, your personal beliefs, affect how cognitive biases are gonna affect how you interpret facts and in the ending make decisions. So for example, one cognitive bias might affect one person this way, but that same bias for another person might not even register. In fact, in the same person, that same cognitive bias may affect them when they're dealing with one life situation, but when they're dealing with another, that same cognitive bias might not even appear. It just depends on the person and how they were brought up and the things that they believe in. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is in today's society, when we look at how much information is available to us, at what rate, I mean, information is just being bombarded to us, we need to be better thinkers about how we interpret information. So if we know that cognitive biases can influence how we interpret certain pieces of information, we can kind of rely on strictly facts and evidence to lead us to the right way instead of letting our personal beliefs or even religious beliefs get in the way of making good decisions. As mentioned before, cognitive biases is taught in high level businesses because if you're relying on a bias to make a decision, you might make a major mistake. Here's one from my personal history at Verizon Wireless. So this story takes place before Verizon got the iPhone. So at the time, only AT&T had it. I had this manager who I continuously butted heads with on this subject that it was important that we get the iPhone. And I'm not an Apple person, okay? I got all PC and I got all Android stuff, but I could see the value of having that iPhone on our network. Okay, so fine, whatever. This manager could not see the value of having the Apple iPhone on the Verizon network. So for whatever reason, that then at the time manager is now a district manager just refused. We don't need the iPhone. So whether or not he was anti-Apple, which is a bias, whether or not he was didn't like me and therefore didn't like my opinion, which is another type of bias, or maybe he was just siding with what his upper leadership people were telling him, which is another blind bias. He could not see through the fact that customers came in on a daily basis asking for it. And my main point is this. Can you imagine if that manager, who is now a district manager, was at the very top and was the person in charge of making the decision to bring the iPhone to Verizon. Can you imagine what a disaster it would have been for Verizon's network? It would have come off of AT&T exclusively, gone to T-Mobile, gone to Sprint, stayed with AT&T, and Verizon would not have it. Can you imagine the disaster that would have been the customers that would have churned over and gone to the other two networks that had it? It would have been disastrous, and that's why it's important to really have a hard look at what the facts that are in front of you are presenting instead of relying on the cognitive biases to help you make those decisions. All right, here is a cognitive bias from my own personal inventory that affects me personally. 
So it's called loss aversion. What it is, it's basically we tend to stay away from things that are gonna cost us loss. And in this case, it's money. Nobody likes to lose money, so we stay away from the activities or things that are gonna make us lose money. For me, here's how it works. So I've gotten pretty good at playing a game here in Vegas and I'm 98% successful most of the time, which means that out of 100 times, I'm gonna win 98 times and lose twice. Now I should be partying it up. I have a 98% chance at winning every time I sit down. But because that bias called loss aversion affects me so deeply, my attention is on this 2%, right? If I told any other hardcore gambler that you're gonna win 98% of the time, they're like the hell with that 2%. I'm living it up on this 98%. But for me, that's one of those cognitive biases that I just struggle with. And at times, it causes me to make really bad decisions. Like sometimes I pull out too early instead of staying in the hand. Um, and that's, that's bad. It's costing me money and making me make really bad decisions. But that's just another example um, of even in the face of just pure evidence that I have, this 98% chance, I still struggle with it and it's, it's hard to overcome. So if you guys want more information about loss aversion or any of the other cognitive biases, check it out on YouTube or just Google it. There's tons of information out there. Uh, but that's the ending of this video. So if you found it useful, please share it as much as possible. Remember, learning about cognitive biases is going to help us all make better decisions. So when we hear things in the news or we hear people talking about things, we can make better decisions and not rely on cognitive biases. So guys, again, this is the ending of this video. If you liked it, please give me the thumbs up, share it as much as possible. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And as always, I'll catch you guys later.